So what I'm gonna do is just kind of give some particulars to help set everybody up for success so that it's, it's a good confession and it's also a very, very kind of subjectively safe and encouraging and good experience, okay? Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal and this is Ascension Presents. So this is part two of a two-part series on the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Last week, if you wanna visit it, if you haven't seen it again, it's just a little bit, again, of my own heart for the sacrament and, and what I'm experiencing on my end as a confessor. Uh, the second part is, is related, but it's, it's just quite practical. And again, it, like there as, as a confessor, um, in the name of Jesus, particularly in such a vulnerable place, I'm, I'm, I'm there kind of to do two things, right? I'm there to, to, to be there as an instrument of pardon, um, to offer God's forgiveness. And part of that is, is receiving and judging sins. So I have to kind of know what's going on. But, but really like a, a, a core is like, I just really need to make sure that you feel loved and feel safe. Um, and uh, especially because it's so vulnerable, right? And so, so, so we're, there's like, there is some concrete information that needs to be shared, but also like, I want to set you up for success. And, and I just really want to make sure that you feel received and feel cared for and feel safe in the context of the sacrament. First thing you're going to want to do is when you go to confession is you're going to want to just say like, how long has it been? Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been three weeks. It's been five months, it's been 10 years. This is just gonna give Father some context for, for what we're working with. Secondly, where I'm gonna offer a little like personal opinion is it's helpful to, to give uh, very briefly any information on your state in life, which you think is really relevant and important. For example, like as a priest, when I go to confession, I need to, to tell the priest, bless me Father for I have sinned, it's been two weeks of my last confession, I'm a priest and religious and final vows. That just gives him some, some context of who I am and what he's working with, but also some obligations of my life. But, but there, there can also be, again, some other information which is going to be helpful, okay? So it could be like, you know, um, bless me, Father, blah, 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 it's been however long. Like, I'm a, I'm a mom with five kids under eight, right? And again, that's going to kind of give me some very kind of concrete insight into what's going on in your life. Uh, bless me, Father, it's been this long, and just I've been in AA for four years, uh, sober for three months. Okay, this is going to give me some information. Bless me, bless me, Father. I'm a dad, uh, a couple of kids. I travel for work. Okay, this is going to give me some information. Or like I struggle with depression. I've been in, I'm in, but I'm in counseling. And and I like if like, you're in counseling, it is helpful to share that information uh, because there's certain things that might come up where the priest might want to say like, okay, it'd be good for those that to be in counseling. It's just, it's just a sensitive thing to recommend counseling to somebody that you don't really know that well. And so if you're already in counseling, that's going to be a great information to share. And it lets me know that there's, there's some instrument in place already to walk with you in these different areas. Perhaps maybe scrupulosity needs a thing. If you know that someone's been telling you that all these sorts of things, you can do it very, very quickly, but they're going to communicate to the priest, um, kind of a little bit of the particulars, of your situation, okay? Um, and again, uh, the state in life, um, particularly if you're a priest, if you're religious, those are really important. These other things aren't strictly necessary, but particularly if it's space where Father might have a, some time to give you some feedback, sharing particular information like this it could just sort of set everybody again up for success for the, for the rest, rest of the sacrament. And now, again, when we're confessing our sins, what needs to be confessed, right, are all known mortal sins. Uh, the number and the kind. And why this is important is is because it gives us just kind of some understanding of like the gravity of it. Like what are, what are we dealing with? And being a little bit more specific is going to be very helpful because again, that's going to communicate to the priest uh, what, what your actual situation is. And there's just certain areas, particularly the area of chastity, it's just a sensitive area. And so if we don't have to ask questions into that area, like that's ideal. All right, and so here's like some examples of what what kind of uh, clarity or sort of specificity, again, is going to be helpful. Bless me, Father. You know, I, I sinned with um, had some sins with with chastity or against purity. Okay, um, that could be pornography, that could be masturbation, that could be adultery, that could be um, kind of like serial fornication, right? Like. That, like, that just could be a lot of things, right? And so, so part of what we need to know as a priest is like we actually need to know like what's going on for like, because we need to absolve these sins that we know about, but also we need just 
as we want to like walk with you and, and kind of care for you, it's just helpful to know some information. So bless me, Father. I, um, you know, committed the sin of pornography and masturbation, and it's kind of been a, a daily struggle for the last two weeks. Okay. Um, uh, like bless me, Father. You know, uh, I, I, you know, fall of chastity, fornication with um, kind of this girl who I didn't really know that well. Okay. So, so just like. Again, we don't need to get into to graphic details and it can be helpful just to use technical terms to make it feel kind of less whatever, less like intimate or kind of scary. Um, but actually naming, naming the, the sin when there's different mortal sins involved and, and some sort of understanding of like the scope of it is going to be helpful. Again, you need to say the kind of the sin, the mortal sin and the number. And so, so like you need, you need to confess that and, and kind of, uh, again, you just help Father out and you help avoid us to have to do anything sort of like more sort of sensitive if you just kind of like share it. Okay. And I've heard other priests say this as well, like just as, as people are vulnerable and they're honest, um, what stands out isn't like the sins, uh, but what stands out is the courage to be vulnerable and to be honest. And, and again, like I'm always deeply moved by people who make really humble and sincere confessions. And, and I don't, I'm not paying attention or kind of like focusing on the sin, but it's like, oh, what a beautiful confession. Like what a beautiful and vulnerable and courageous heart. Like that's, that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing as a priest, okay? Something else that like it practically is really, really helpful is to end your confession by saying, okay, and these are my sins and for them I'm truly sorry. Because again, like sometimes what happens is you, you give your sins and then there's just quiet. And as a priest, like, I don't want to say, is there anything else? Right? Because for many people, that's like, oh no, did I forget something? Father thinks I forgot something. Like, that can be an unsettling question. Um, at the same time, if you're giving a pause because you're thinking, like, I don't want to say, all right, great confession, and make you feel like I'm cutting you off. Right, and so what's really helpful to the priest is you you come in well prepared, you you state you state your confession, okay, you begin formally. Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been three weeks since my last confession, and uh, whatever. I'm a college student. Here are my sins. These are my sins, and for them I'm truly sorry. Concrete start, concrete end. Just again, that kind of clarity helps everybody feel sort of safe and doesn't and and kind of prevents some some miscommunication okay second thing with the confession is please it's really helpful to stay focused and to stay focused on like confession really is there for our sins and there's a part of it part of like giving peace and encouragement where there is some some space for pastoral counseling but it's not therapy it's not primarily about pastoral counseling especially with other people in line so it's really helpful just to kind of stay focused again there can be situations where a penitent kind of goes on for a 10 or 12 minute thing. And again, for the priest, like that's like, it's like the worst. Because the last thing I want to do in this place of mercy and healing and vulnerability is to have to interrupt you and cut you off. But if there's this whole long of people, it's like, that's just something that Father has to take into consideration. So kind of staying focused and, 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 and giving your sins. Generally, like the confession part just generally doesn't take a great deal of time, okay? Something else that's just a part of life that's helpful to take into consideration is, is how long is this time of confession and how many people are there? Um, and, and that's just really helpful for setting people up for success. And, and maybe you have this experience for email or in like a, a group, group sort of sharing where somebody might ask a question or share something that's really too much to be handled well or delicately in that context and so they're kind of set up for being even hurt more in like a really vulnerable place just because of, of the context, okay? And so if you're coming to confession and you really want to, to just kind of share what's going on in your heart and you really want Father to be there in the name of Jesus just to listen to and to receive you for an extended period of time, but if there's 30 people in line and it's 30 minutes until Mass, that's just not a great setup. And so here's some just practical things, okay? Like if you're really looking for a period of time just to have some like really good time with a priest and part of that might be confession, almost every, every priest I know, every parish I know has the opportunity for setting up an appointment. 
So that might be something you try and set up, say, on a monthly basis, or maybe it's every three months. Hey, Father, can I just get a set appointment? Maybe it's like a 30-minute time slot. And that just can create some space for a little bit more of a deeper sharing and a little bit more of a back and forth with the priest. Also, I understand that the idea that parishes may only be like cramming in confessions, like, isn't great either. And so I apologize for that. But the way to deal with that isn't just to ignore it and just to sort of take up uh, like 10 minutes of a 30 minute confession slot so that there's all these other people who can't go. And it just, it just doesn't end up working well for everybody. Okay. So if you are looking for a longer confession, either sort of find a situation where priests might have more time, for example, going to a friary, like we generally going to have some space or trying to set up an appointment uh, with a priest. Okay. Okay, and the last thing I'd really encourage you with is, um, is don't try, you don't need to try and perform. You don't need to try and perform and have a perfect sort of everything all in order. Have a good sense, be free, be vulnerable, share what's going on, and that will make for a great confession. We might have one more video talking about some practical, some spiritual approaches to confession, um, but thank you again for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth, so peregrinos poco a poco, little by little, vamos a llegar. We're gonna make it. God bless you, everybody.